Hello there, I'm Katori87, welcome back to another episode of Rule the Waves 2. We're playing as Great Britain, we've been at war with Russia for the past six months, and we just suffered a devastating defeat at the hands of the Russian fleet. We lost one battleship to fires raging out of control. Fortunately, the rest of our fleet was able to disengage without significant loss. So, with that in mind... I have reviewed my strategies and equipment, and it turns out we've been operating with a fairly significant uh, mistake. Uh, so we'll take a quick look at our doctrine, and I'll explain what's going on. So, I'm not too concerned with training priorities. The Royal Navy is doing pretty well in terms of uh, fleet quality there. No need for any special training. However, my primary mistake was in the usage of my ammunition. In this very early stage of the game, armor-piercing ammunition is not very effective. So what we need to do is change that around to primarily use high explosive to incite fires. Once we cause fires to, cut, to burn out of control, then the enemy starts losing ships. So that is going to be our primary objective from here on out. At least until we get into the early and middle Dreadnought era, then we can start switching back to armor-piercing shells. So for right now, let's change around our ammunition distribution. So we're going to drop down our secondary armor-piercing content and raise up our high explosive percent on our secondaries. And then for our main guns in the larger calibers, we're going to start swapping that around as well. Drop main gun armor piercing down to 50% and 50% high explosive as well. That doesn't mean a whole lot until we actually start using it against the correct targets. So for the enemy ships, we've got secondary guns, small caliber stuff, four to six inches is going to be AP at close range, HE for all the rest. And for all the rest, we want actually about the same thing. So we're going to swap that over to AP at close range and high explosive for all the rest at all ranges. Yep, we want to save the doctrine. All right, going on to armored cruisers. Uh, we still want to be slinging a high explosive at them. All the way up to 10 inch guns for the 11 inch and larger, the major guns, then uh, yes, that ones actually do have the capability of piercing armor, but I still want to be slinging high explosive at the long range because I don't have the penetration at that range to actually do anything. We're also going to save the ammo loadout and yep, save changes to ammo doctrine and verification of light cruisers. The light cruiser doctrine actually looks okay. So I'm not going to worry about those ones too much. We'll call that good. All right. Uh, we're also going to look at... All right, dock size is building up. Ship's under construction. The uh, We'll have a replacement Anson-class battleship coming out in just a few months, so that'll be good to replace our losses. We've got Jed-class destroyers coming out, so that's good, replacing losses. We only just laid down a... Uh, fresh set of them last month, so those are coming along quite nicely. And then we have an extensive collection of cruisers, which is good because we've lost a few, so we could certainly use the replacements. Uh, we do actually have the capability to build submarines now, so I'm actually going to order a few, eh, just two, of these early submarines just to see what we can do with them. I'm not going to be too uh, investing too much into these ships very early on because they don't really have the capability of doing much this early in the game. But I do think we should also review our research doctrine. All right, uh, we do need... All right, research here is looking good. Chugging, chugging along quite well, except for my fleet tactics. We need faster research there. That is significant if I'm going to be playing primarily with AI control, so we need to develop much more of that. And that requires dropping something else down 
to keep things balanced out. So what can we drop? Uh, I think we're going to drop the turrets and gun mountings because there's nothing significant in there for quite a while. So we'll let time advance so that maybe we can steal some technologies from other nations in that area. We'll call that good. All right, so that looks good. And the next thing, I also want to see if we can build a mine laying ship. So I'm going to take a look at building a Corvette or AMC that can deploy mines. So let's take a look at AMCs. Actually, no, we'll build, we'll call it a Corvette. So we'll try a few different auto design versions. 900 tons? Eh, not great. Bump that up a little bit more. How much tonnage do we have? And most importantly, we do not have mine rails on these ships. So can't do a whole lot there. Let's take a look at AMCs. Okay, so AMCs definitely do have mine rails. And the amount that they can deploy is dependent upon the size of the ship. Interesting. So, I do believe, well, for right now, it's not really worth it to be building these ships, not until we have dedicated capability there. AMCs disappear at the end of each war. They get sold back into civilian use, which is not the best use of our finances at this point in time. So I'm not going to worry about this for right now, but uh, hopefully at some point we'll be able to develop a class of, uh... actually, what about cruisers? Okay, cruisers aren't able. What about light cruisers? Uh, so it looks like no class of ships is able to carry mines at this point in time, aside from AMCs, which I'm not really interested in building. All right, in that case, we're going to visit preferences. I'm going to drop down to rear admiral's mode so I can take more close control over the uh, scouting forces, the armored cruisers. In the last major fleet action, we weren't able to bring the enemy to close battle because the armored cruisers were just milling around in confusion, and that's not really the sort of thing that I want. All right, now that things are set, it is time to advance to the next turn. All right. Enemy coastal raid, battle size medium. All right, I think we will accept this battle and see what happens. All right, we have one armored cruiser and a group of destroyers, and it is bright and early. So we should have all day to pursue this fight. See what sort of. Oh, and we have a support force with battleships and a heavy cruiser. Okay, I need to go turn off the support force because that is very annoying to have ships that I cannot control. All right. Well, let us start the uh, action. Oh, we have a report. And of course it's over by Plymouth. All right, well, we'll head in that direction. Yeah, it looks like battle has actually been joined. Hopefully we can get there in time. I don't like losing my patrol craft. Oh, I 
I'm sure they're around here somewhere. Aha! Uh -huh. Another report. Here we go. One heavy cruiser and a destroyer. All right, looks like we might have a decent fight on our hands. If we can actually spot the opponent. And it's sunset. So I don't think we'll actually get a decent fight this time. Oh, come on. Why is it so hard to find these things? So they had one cruiser and one destroyer out there? Oh, we totally could have taken that. Let's see, where did they even go? So they were just wandering around here. We were in the right area, why didn't we find them? Oh well. Alright, turning off the support force. And... Leave scenario. Minor victory! Oh, well, I'll take it. Alright, we're getting some cruisers. That's always good. Oh, enemy is sending out feelers about a negotiated peace. Well, we're not gonna have that. Continued observations will secure our total victory. Alright, a temporary setback in figuring out improved signaling. Well, I hope they figure that out soon. I'm very tired of losing ships losing contact or misinterpreting signals. Alright, so we are still gaining plenty of victory points for blockading the enemy, and our ally is giving us plenty more victory points. So regardless of the naval defeat, we are continuing to win the war overall. Alright. Quick review, nothing significant going on. Alright, next turn. A cruiser action. Alright. We'll accept. Scylla and Retribution. Alright, so we've got our fleet cruisers out. We'll see what they encounter. Alright, we have an unknown ship sighted. Time to accelerate and investigate. Turn towards. A Nadeza class. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know if that's such a good idea. They've got a lot of six inch guns there. And apparently they have aircraft as well. I don't know how they have a catapult for aircraft when aircraft haven't even been invented yet, but okay. I'll take their word for it. Our own ships have slightly fewer 6-inch guns, but we are better armored. And better trained, so we will take this fight and see how it goes. And their other cruiser is a Flora class, which is contributing, essentially, a target to the fight. Excellent. Alright, so we've got targets identified. We do have the speed advantage on them. So we are able to force the fight. Outstanding. Now we just need to actually start shooting them. Alright. Let's see, are we actually making speed yet? Apparently not, they're still building up steam. So it'll take a little bit. 
still accelerating up to 22 knots. There we go. Nope, still 20. Come on, guys. It's not that hard to shovel extra coal in. Sites. You know what? I'm going to order my destroyers to attack. Hopefully they'll engage those enemy destroyers. Alright, so I've seen a hit. Let's see, what even was that? So we are scoring hits on them. Up to speed. Okay, this is getting rather annoying. I'd very much like to actually get in range and shoot these things up. We have the opportunity to score a decisive victory here. My destroyers are clearly not interested in getting in there. Oh, they thought they could be tricky. Actually, let's take a moment and check and see what my hit probability is. So theoretically, having the enemy silhouetted against the setting sun has an effect on your gunnery. Let's see how that shows up in here. We've got basic hit chance, not great. Small salvo, because we're only firing... What, it looks like one gun? Huh, interesting. Target size, yeah, makes sense. Small ship. Fire control, not great. Technology level, severely limited, yes, very early in game. Poor sea state, okay, that makes sense. Dusk. There we go. So we've got a little bit of a penalty for dusk. Alright. Well, we'll see if we can actually get in there. And of course, the destroyers misunderstand signals. not the best position in the world. It leaves us vulnerable to torpedoes, but hopefully we're early enough in the game that they don't have torpedoes that can reach this far. And now we just need to maintain contact with them. Aha! Here we go. That ought to trap them. What the? What is Scylla doing? Oh, I am very confused. Okay, Scylla must have detached to engage the enemy more closely. Hopefully that means she actually does. And then she randomly decides to reattach. And circle around and get out of range. Well, I guess that's one way to do it. And we are finally in range and getting some damage. By that, I mean scoring lots of 4-inch hits. That's not going well. There we go, starting to get some 6-inch hits. Well, that was not a good turn. 
you, Retribution is seriously getting pounded here. Let's see how she's holding up. Alright. Moderate structure damage. She's taking quite a few medium hits. But I know we've scored a fair number in return. There we go. Now we're starting to get some damage on him. Watch out for the destroyers. These secondaries prove decisive. How's the retribution holding up? Limited to 18 knots, but we're still closing with the enemy and... Oh no! Asilla got hit by a torpedo. Well, the good news is she is very close to home port, so we'll just detach her and send her home. Alright, Scylla, detach, go home to friendly base. We'll leave the Retribution to finish the fight. Ooh, we got Torpedo in the water. That's looking like a good shot for the Flora. Oh, and it ran out of range. How is the Scylla holding up? I know she's not doing hot, but looks like she's getting that flooding under control. Yeah, here we go, we've got... Okay, her speed is limited, which is good, because that means she can't increase flooding anymore by running too fast. And she's limiting flooding, all right. She'll probably make it back, given how close we are to port. Ooh, there we go. That's some solid hits. Oh, come on. That was such a good torpedo. It passed underneath the flora and the... No, does huh? Oh, we almost got him. All right, we've got fires set on the Nadezha. Hopefully, we can put those a little bit worse. Do speed there, so we don't outrun our opponents. Heavy damage and on fire. Excellent. Let's see how the retribution is holding up. Alright. A little bit of flooding. To be expected from a fight this long. She's taken quite a few hits. How's the ammunition holding up? Alright. The port side is running very low on ammunition. Starboard. Looks like both forward wing turrets are running low. Forward turret is completely out, so it's okay that it's disabled. Starboard side is also running fairly low. And there's still a destroyer running around, and I don't like that. All right, looks like our friendly cruiser has made it back to port, so that's good. She'll survive to fight another day. And hopefully we can get... All right, our destroyers are finally starting to engage. Ah, if only we could get a few hits. There we go. 
some hits on that destroyer. Alright, that should put it out of action. Now I can get back on those cruisers. Ooh, there we go. I think that flora is finished. Now I just need to finish up the Nadezha. How are we doing on ammunition? Uh, not so great. It's just the wing turrets. Aft gun is down to high explosive. And our starboard turrets are also running low. Starboard wing, starboard wing, and just a few more shots. They should be opening up with HE though, so that's good. And we can reduce speed even more. Just stick with it. There we go. Now we're starting to sling HE. close and get shot by a torpedo that would be bad there we go destroyers put in the finishing touch there and now I think it's time to head home how are we doing on ammunition still got plenty of ammunition on the starboard side they keep on complaining that Jed is out of ammunition for guns that bear how are they doing Oh, I think it's just complaining because he doesn't have a stern gun. Hmm. Still got plenty of ammunition for the secondary guns, and that's the important thing right now. But I think it is time for us to head back home. So we'll just head for Quark. We'll pull in and leave these ships to their fate. Oh, come on. And there we go. Oh, come on, where'd they go? There's a battleship out there? When did that happen? That's gotta be wrong. I don't trust you, Queen Amelie. Ah. Okay, so Russia did have a support force out there. They had a heavy cruiser and a light cruiser. Overall, I would call that a decisive victory. We sank two of their cruisers and two destroyers, and their other force did not get to engage at all. Outstanding. And we got all of our ships back intact. Let's take a quick look at things. All right, so the Adesa, the Flora, both got shot by torpedoes, but they also took quite a few six inch and four inch hits. So let's take a quick look at that. All right, when was she considered, when was she formally considered sunk? Ah, here we go. Fires raging out of control. That is what we were looking for by switching over to HE ammunition. All right, that is the sort of decisive result we're looking for. What about the Flora? She was just sunk, so I'm not too worried about that. Let's see. And... All right, and the Flora was sunk by the torpedo. Almost instantly. Yep, she was hit by a torpedo, engines knocked out, and immediately sinking through progressive flooding. So, yep. Decisive torpedo hit. All right, cool. Well, that was a very good result. 
Hey, hey, a major victory, and that should put us ahead on victory points by quite a margin. Alright, the army wants to more resources? Absolutely not. Only the navy can win this war. We should not waste resources on indecisive war fighting in Russia. As everybody knows, it is folly to invade Ru to fight a land war in Asia. And I have no intention of doing that. We will crush them at sea. Alright, we have new torpedo technology. That's helpful. Getting us extended range and slightly higher speed. It's very nice. And the Russians are being very ineffective with their rating, so that's good. And we are decisively maintaining our blockade. Excellent. Alright, let's check our construction real quick. It is time to lay down another batch of destroyers. So we'll put down another four Jed class destroyers. And we also commissioned a few cruisers. So I think we're going to order one more. Intrepid class, as those ships have been doing quite well so far. All right, the Charybdis. Interesting, especially because we already have a ship named the Scylla. Well, that's a bad place to be in. All right. Well, moving on to our next turn. Enemy coastal raid, battle size medium. Eh, I'm hoping for a larger fight here, but we'll take this. And once again, we have the Intrepid out there. And the Retribution. Ooh. And we've got terrible weather. Hopefully my destroyers can hold up under this. We've got a strong gale and light rain. I would be very surprised if we successfully engage anything in this, and I do not expect any sort of effective gunnery. But, it's a fight they want, so it's a fight we'll get. Well, looks like we're headed in the right direction. They're reporting cruisers of some sort, two of them. We'll see when we get there. And a battleship? That might be armored cruisers. We'll see. I do not trust any of these to give accurate indications, but there's some sort of ships out there, probably major ships. Here we go. Aha! A Vladimir class. Alright, heavier armored, but only 5 inch guns. And 20 knots. And the Palada class, also 20 knots. But neither. But she doesn't have any armor on her guns, which means it's a lot easier for us to knock them out. So I think it is time to accelerate to attack speed. If we're able to get up to attack speed. Given that speed is limited, 16 knots by weather, but we will try. We're going to reduce game speed to normal so we can actually control this fight. And who knows what my destroyers are doing. We shall see. Meanwhile, let's get into this fight. Let's do a quick check of what we've got going on here. So we already know what they've got. But it looks like we are we are firing AP due to the range. Let's take a look. So, so we have a maximum range of 9,000 yards and Penetration of up to 2.9 inches. I don't know if we'll be able to go through their belt at this range. 
Let's take a look at our accuracy. Ooh, that C state is definitely hurting things. And we're also taking a hit for the target size modifier. But a uh, one and a half percent chance to hit, that is not bad for what we're doing. I will take those odds. We are already starting to score decisive hits. I'll just let things run. And it looks like the enemy's destroyers are lagging behind just like mine. We'll see what happens if they manage to identify them. How are we doing up here? Overall looking good. Not too much damage there. Not too much damage here, although hopefully he'll get the other guns into action. As soon as we shoot through that uh, AP, they'll switch over to HE and that should start putting fires on them. Ooh. Uh-oh. That's not good. That's enemy armored cruisers. And I do not want to go fighting those. Uh, all right. What should we do? What should we do? Well, I could turn for Harwich and try and make a run for it. Or I could turn around and head north. Back to uh, Grimsby. Either way, I do not want to engage those armored cruisers. That would be a disaster. Well, let's see if I can swing north of these cruisers. Maybe lure them into following me. I still want some sort of victory. So we need to kill something. Oh, that was close. All right, those larger ships are going to run me down. So we have no room for mistakes. And since we don't have a support force, there's not a whole lot that we can do against these. So all we can really do is to try and disengage. Although, I can try to order a destroyer attack, and who knows, maybe they'll actually do it. Haven't had a whole lot of success now, but oh, look at that. They're actually starting to move in. Hey, maybe we can distract them with... Uh... Oh. Their objective is to destroy that installation. I don't think we're going to be able to win this one. I will count surviving as a victory. Alright, it appears that they are pursuing us far to the north, and hopefully we'll be too distracted to actually engage. Alright, we've got nightfall. Now I can make a turn for home port. They are still pursuing. But I don't think they'll be able to take out that target. So I think their overall raid will be unsuccessful. Oh no. Some of our destroyers are starting to take high seas damage. That's not good. Then again, it is Hurricane Force wins. So yeah, that makes sense. All right, well, let's get them out of there. Head back to port. Yep, I do want to enter port. And scenario over. Oh, interesting. We actually sunk one of their destroyers. 
Outstanding! And they failed to destroy the bombardment target. Wow, we will call that a victory. Alright, we have a minor victory. Not a whole lot of victory points, but every little bit counts. Starting to get some of those raiders intercepted, so that's good. Alright, well, we are right at the 40 minute mark here, so I'm gonna call that an episode. Until next time, Katori87, signing out.